Ms. Legalista here, aka Attorney Sheila. We are going to be talking about DJ Envy. Now, I have done a couple of videos on this already, mostly having to deal with the defamation lawsuit in terms of him saying, hey, these people are saying I did things and it's not true. But in this case, I really want to talk a little bit more about why you should even be concerning yourself with what happened here, what happened in this case. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because many of us provide referrals to people all the time. They may be business associates that we know of. They may be a person who provides services or products. So we refer them out. We say, hey, try this person. Consider trying my friend here. And in some cases, they you may go back and do the research yourself or you may not. You may just take them at their word because you trust that person. Well, when it comes to someone like DJ Envy, who is a public figure, someone who's a radio personality, then we don't really know that person, right? So how do we get to the point where we say we're going to trust this celebrity and invest and do all of the things that this celebrity says? Well, part of it has to do with how we see this celebrity. I want to go over to DJ Envy's Instagram account for a moment. And I want to go over what he calls himself on this, because I think that has a lot to do with it. These sort of monikers that we give ourselves, how we put ourselves out there in public. This is his Instagram page. And I want us to just take a look there at the top, how he describes himself. He says, DJ Hall of Famer, best-selling author, actor, breakfast club, husband, father of six, car lover. It's these kinds of names and titles that we put in our profile so that we let people know, hey, usually this is what I think of myself as, right? Or this is what people come to me for. Hall of Famer, best-selling author, actor, Breakfast Club. I didn't know he had written anything. But again, you know, it's the appearance of success here. He has 2.2 million followers on his Instagram page. And you can see DJ Envy, and then you've got his government name there. So let me go back and talk a, a little bit more about this whole idea of getting behind certain people and teaming up with certain people and not even vetting people like you should be vetting people. A lot of times we see people even locally. So I'm not even talking about national or international celebrities here, even local people that you may admire from afar and that you may say to yourself, oh, I wish I could work with that person. That still happens. You see that a lot when it comes to artists and certain kinds of businesses. And it's because you see what they're doing in the community and then they highlight certain aspects of their life. Again, it's all of the shiny things that, that look very attractive. It's the appearance of success. People wanna be next to someone who appears successful. Look at everyone who was really trying to be a part of the Trump presidency and being in his camp. Yes, and we know where some of those people landed. Now, nobody really wants to be associated with failure. They don't necessarily want to be associated with the person who, you know, has has had some rough patches. They look at that and they say, well, you know, maybe that person's still healing, still getting over the trauma, still lifting themselves back up. People generally look up. So all these people they put on a pedestal, forgetting that everybody makes mistakes and that the things that we put out into the world are sometimes, you know, the best pictures, the best highlights, the best features, the best stories, the best of our life, because we know that in some cases, employers and other people are going to be looking. And so we want to look like what we're hireable, we're good friend material, we're good mate material. And so now we have all sort of cleaned up our social profiles and we put these titles out there so that we can look really good in the world. And again, 
what that does is people say, oh, you know, well, that's a successful person. That person appears to be doing well. And you know absolutely nothing about whether or not they're really doing well at all. Absolutely nothing. You're basing all of that on what you see from over here. And most of the time, you've never been in their house. You don't have any access to their family to have conversations with these people. You don't have access to their finances. And so you're going off of appearances. Well, I want to talk to you about some things you may want to think about instead. And here were some other things I was thinking about. You know, we go off appearances. We think we're going to get a better network, right? That this relationship is going to open doors for us. But let me see if I can uh, pull up, and this should be interesting. Let's get rid of this. Um, and my phone is ringing now. But let let me see if I can pull up this ebook that I've written about how to vet a business partner. Because there are a couple things I want to point out to you about what you should be thinking about when it comes to, hey, yeah, um, I have a business partner and I really want to do some work with them or do more work with them? Should we have a contract? What should this look like? And so I have this, like I was saying, I have this ebook called How to Vet a Business Partner. And I'm not going to go through the, the whole thing here. As a matter of fact, I think what I may do also is to set up some sort of link so that you can download it and get it uh, at no cost. And I don't even sell it for that much. So I don't mind giving it away for, for free. If that helps people learn what to look for, what to look for if you're working with someone else. This is my professional opinion here. Let me scroll through this and tell you some of the highlights here. All right. So yeah, we can skip all that. I did want to go through just this part here toward the end of the opening section here. It says, this topic is one that I feel deeply about, mostly because the stakes are always higher when we work with others. There are more challenges, but there are also more opportunities to fly higher. As it has been said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. It is my hope that you will always choose to go further, but that you will do it with as few bumps, bruises, and bang-ups as possible which means you really and truly need to sit down and vet this other person. So you have formal partnerships and I'm going to scroll through that because I want to get to this section where it's, you know, not the formal stuff. It's not the formal stuff. Like I said, it's that stuff where, you know, you're working with somebody and things aren't exactly clear. I want to go to this section here where it says business affiliations According to the IRS, a business affiliation exists when one business controls or has the power to control another, or when a third party controls or has the power to control both businesses. Look, here are some examples they've got down here. Retail website with customer reviews, bloggers and social media posts, restaurant reviews, real estate and financial services. Doesn't that sound like where this whole thing with DJ Envy may fit? All right, let's scroll to the second to this part, let's get through the advantages and disadvantages, economies of scale. I mean, you guys can check all of this out, but I want to go to, you know, some things to sort of think about here when you get ready to say, I'm going to work with someone. Vetting part one, <laughs> vetting part one, what you can do. And this is like the easy stuff. And here's what I'm saying here. Vetting is not something new. We've always vetted. We ask people for recommendations for physicians, hairstylists, and babysitters. We go online and check out the ratings for restaurants and what people are saying. So this is not really anything new. Like I said, we've been doing this all the time. So let me just sort of go through this. First of all, you want to start with conducting a Google search. Do you know how many people will start working with somebody else and never even do a Google search to see if they have a website and to see if there are any comments out there about them on Yelp or anything like that. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to uh, believe everything you read, but just that basic research. It says here, make sure you click on the various search options, web, news, and images, because you know, on Google, you can pick, you know, so you want to make sure you go through all of those because you may not get the same results if you click on something that's different. And here's the other thing. We get so lazy, right? 
uh, we're so accustomed to going through that first and that second page and then stopping and giving up. And it may be that you need to go to the fifth or sixth page to actually pull up something of value. So keep looking. You never know what you're going to find if you do that deep search. Don't just read the articles. Check out the photos that you see in the search. You want to, you actually want to go down the rabbit hole a little bit. So if you start to see photos, it's, well, who is that that's in the picture with that person? Because sometimes it may let you know that they are associated with other people that you may not want to be associated with. I cannot tell you um, how many times I have had clients say, well, they didn't realize until later, until they did some more research that that person was associated with something, with another party that they did not want to be associated with. And then what's the caption? All right. Then the next piece, check your local and state records offices. Look, register of deeds, property tax office, business records. Everybody runs into hiccups now and then. And so I'm not saying just because somebody filed for bankruptcy um, that you should run away. It just means that you should ask more questions. Find out what happened. When did it happen? You want to be able to look and see. I mean, and it's not just bad things. It's good things, too. You want to check out and see if they have registered trademarks or trade names. You don't want to get into a business relationship with them and find out later that some of the things you thought you were going to be able to do, you're not going to be able to do because there's already a registered copyright on something very similar. And now there's going to be some sort of conflict of interest. So go to these sites and do the research. There are a lot of government sites out there that will give you tons of information. And then of course, check social media. Now don't go out there and pretend to be somebody and do some fraudulent stuff. That is not what I'm talking about. You can go to someone's LinkedIn page, their business Facebook page, or their business person, or their Facebook personal page, depending upon what your needs are. But don't do anything fraudulent. There's enough information out there without you having to do that. And so as you see here, it says checking LinkedIn. You can see employment history, recommendations. You can even see groups that they may even follow. You can get a sense of what they comment on and what kind of comments they make. If they're writing articles and posts, you can get a sense about the writing style. Again, because it may not be that this is a bad person. It may just be that it's not a good fit. If they're providing images and video, do they have a blog? In some cases, it says you may see public posts on some of these social media platforms. So yeah, so those are all of these public places that you can look just by looking around. And again, you know, you want to, you want to take some time um, and figure out if this is a good fit. And then here's something that I always tell people, my final suggestion that I always tell my clients is this, listen to your gut instinct. I've had conversations with clients who tell me after the business relationship has gone sour, that they knew something wasn't right in the beginning and that they had a feeling about the person and that something just didn't quite add up. I'm not a psychologist, but I always feel like the subconscious can pick up on something earlier than the conscious can sometimes. So if you have a funny feeling about a person, go with it, trust it. And so then I actually have a questionnaire in here that you can ask, and this is more subjective. Then here's like some things that you want to ask. What are their professional names or aliases have they gone by? Is this a married name or is there another name that they're going by? What about the address, business operations, partners, family status? And you may think family status is getting a little too personal, but if you wind up having a formal relationship with a person, then, hey, what happens if they divorce and you're now trying to figure out, well, wait, who are you actually going to have this business with? So resources, liabilities, all of that. So there's a lot that you can do on your own in terms of uh, finding things out when you want to vet this other person. Now, vetting part two, you know, this is doing that deeper dive where you're just like, okay, so what can I agree to with the other person? Because sometimes you may have to have their permission to do some of these next things that I'm going to be talking about. It's not just Googling them and finding out. Okay, so credit report, you know, there are certain limitations around getting someone's credit report. And it says right here, I've got a list of, um, you know, what that pertains to. And you would have to have their authorization. There are a lot of hoops that you're going to have to do if you're going to do that. A background check, you know, a lot of 
a lot of employers are doing that now anyway. Employment verification, due diligence. Look, ownership and management of the prospective business partners' businesses. So that's what I mean when I say know really who you're actually working with, whether the prospective partner has relationships with government officials that may impact what you're trying to do, an analysis of any civil, criminal, or regulatory matters, like have they been fined before by the SEC or received some sort of letter, whether the prospective partner understands anti-corruption and compliance matters. I mean, it's just a lot of things here. Look at this, the identification and disclosure of possible conflicts of interest um, associating with companies in countries that are restricted by U.S. law. And so a lot of these things are just, again, like I said, things that you really need to be thinking about if you're going to be working with somebody else. Do your research and um, check people out. So you had a lot of people who, you know, participated in some of what was going on with Caesar Pena. And they're now saying that they did so because of DJ Envy. So we'll see how all of this plays out. But the real key here, and this is what I'm trying to get across to you, is don't <laughs> just go with people because they're a celebrity. And I don't mean just some sort of national figure. I mean, even local people that you see and that you may decide you want to work with vet them, check them out, ask around, do your research and make sure that before you align your business interests with another party, that make sure that that's a party that you want to want to work with, because in some cases you may not. All right. So go ahead, give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Mwah, peace.